Hey internet friends, welcome back to the channel. My name is Ike and on this channel we'll talk about all things personal finance, economics and financial tech. And on Tuesdays or Tech Tuesdays as we like to call them, we talk about, we look for financial technology that we can use to help us reach our goals and get ahead. And today we're reviewing BrickX. So BrickX is a fractional investing platform that allows you to invest in residential property. So you're probably wondering why does this exist? Well, if you want to invest in property in Australia, you have to be invested in either commercial property or infrastructure. You don't really have an uh, option to invest directly in residential properties. So BrickX is coming in to solve that problem, but also they're marketing themselves as a platform that young people or people trying to get onto the property ladder can use to get that exposure while you're still saving up for a deposit. So at the end of the visit, this video is someone who is into this criteria as a young person looking to buy a property. Is this something that I would use? So let's get into it. Also, if you get any value from this video, please don't forget to like it. It helps the YouTube algorithm push my video out to more people. A subscribe subscription would be fantastic. I, I'm on 51, I'm hoping to get to a thousand by the end of this year. So fingers crossed and I need your help to get there. So what is BrickX and how does it work? So on the BrickX platform, they have a pool of funds and what they usually, what they would do is they'll use their investing team or their profession or their property investing team to go out into the market, look for investment grade properties. And this is something that you have to understand that not all property is investment grade. Not all properties are going to perform. So they're using their specialist skills to go out there, identify the areas in the suburbs, in the street, in the correct streets that are going to outperform the other properties in a particular um, area, right? So you're gonna have professionals kind of evaluating the expected yields, gauging how the suburb has performed, how this property has performed. Okay, this is a good investment. So I think in my book, that's a plus if you can get someone who's a professional to come in and add that professional source to the whole, you know, the whole investment situation that you're trying to establish for yourself. So once they've identified this property uh, and they've got the pool of funds that they've access to, they'll purchase the property and then they'll list that property on their investment platform and they'll break the property down into 10,000 shares or bricks as they call them on the platform. So uh, an example is a, a property that's worth a million dollars will have 10,000 bricks worth $100 each. Okay, so you pretty much for, you know, you can get an exposure to a property in, I don't know what, it's a fancy suburb, but for like a hundred bucks, which is pretty good. So that brick that you buy, that ownership stake in that property gives you access to the rental income, which you can decide to either reinvest or cash out. Also, you get access to that capital growth. So in my opinion, you're not doing this for, um, the yields you're doing this for the capital appreciation and holding it long term and this will become more apparent more later on in the video so the brick x gives you two ways that you can invest in on their platform the first option is the smart invest selection in which you just set up how much money you want to contribute or you deposit the money into your uh, brick wallet and then they allocate that money to the properties that they think are going to outperform they select the properties on your behalf the other option is the build my own option and in that situation you go on the platform look into the properties that they have and you select which properties that you'd want to be investing in so if there's something there's a little bit for if something for everyone if you're someone who's time poor you want to outsource this just you know, set up a direct debit, money going in on, on, on their platform, and they select the properties for you using their expertise. Uh, or if you're someone who really wants to get involved, you really like looking at the property investments personally, then you have that option available to you as well. 
Okay, so now you're probably asking yourself, why would you use Brick X? So there are a couple of advantages. The, the biggest one is you get access to the Australian residential market, which you don't really get with a lot of the other property platforms that you can invest in. The second benefit is that there are low investment minimums. Like some bricks are about 20, 35 bucks. So it's not an expensive option. It's accessible if you don't have a large amount of money for you to get direct property exposure. Two, um, you don't really have to ha have the funds for a deposit. And, the proper, and there are no property transaction fees such as stamp duty, which can be expensive, okay? okay? And the fourth benefit, which I've mentioned earlier, is you get access to professionally selected portfolio of properties. So you can rest assured that all that research has been done to select this property and you don't have to spend your time doing that due diligence. But let's discuss the cons of investing in BrickX. So the cons of using it is low yields. So if you're using Brick X, as I mentioned, you're after the capital, you're not after the yields. The yields were pretty low. Uh, pretty much go on the website and suss them out. I'll try to put, um, I don't know, something on the screen to show you what the properties are and what some of the yields were. The other risk is the risk that you get with all properties is vacancies in tenancy. Sometimes a property might not be tenanted. The, one of the more surprising options that I saw on um, reviewing websites when I was looking up um, background information on BrickX is liquidity issues seem to be a big problem. So from my research, it seems like the biggest issue you have with BrickX is how you sell your, brick, your, sell your bricks. Because it can take a while if there's no one who's interested in buying them. So the market isn't as liquid as uh, let's say the stock market would be. You need someone to be willing to buy your bricks for you to um, be able to sell, <laughs> sell your bricks. I know it sounds simple, but you can actually get stuck. Uh, one reviewer mentioned how they're waiting for 27 days for someone to buy their bricks. So if you need your money in a pinch, you just better hope that there's somebody on the other end of that transaction who's willing to buy those bricks for the price that they're worth pretty much. And another pet peeve of mine is, um, which I think is another disadvantage, is the customer care. So Brick X, if you ever watch this video, if anyone from Big X ever watches this video, it is not a good look for the phone number on your platform to direct the caller to a voice message bank to tell them to send you an email. I mean, if I have an issue, I'd like to actually speak to a human being, uh, not send an email, that's just me. But I think it's poor form if someone is trying to contact customer care, maybe put some care, you know, the keyword is customer care, there should be some care involved there. So have someone, you know, just pick up the phone and answer it. So that it's not that hard. You can get a call center offshore. Anyway, to the biggest issue with Brick X, fees. Okay, I had to dig deep and I'm talking deep into the PDSs to get a better understanding of the fee structure because the fees you pay depend on the property that you are investing in. So on their website, they mentioned that the only the, the fee that they charge is the transaction fee, which is half a bit, half of a percentage to buy and half a percentage to sell. So if you buy a property for a thousand bucks, you're gonna be paying a fee of $5. And if you sell, if you're selling it at $1,000, you're gonna pay another $5 to sell, which is not bad in my opinion. I mean, that's understandable. But when you read the PDS, it actually depends on which property that you are buying because on the older, on the older stock, all the properties that they've had on the platform for ages, those properties are under that structure but the newer ones have an added uh, investment management fee of 2%, which is ridiculously high in my opinion, like paying 2% for managed fee is, is ridiculous. I mean, if you're getting a yield, because I saw yields on their platform of about 1.5%, but you're paying 2% management fees, then what's the point at that stage yeah and also there's the is the performance fee of 30 percent if they beat their benchmark which is it's not it's understandable if 
this is a managed fund or in the funds management space, this makes sense. But in this investment vehicle, it seems excessive in my opinion, but that's something to look out for that. If you do buy, just know which properties that you're investing in. Have a look at the PDSs. I think there's like um, eight or 10 on their website, but just make sure the property you're buying is and read the PDS for that particular property so you don't get caught out because I found that their fees seem a bit excessive for the newer properties. I just want to point out that you can invest in the S&P 500 index fund and pay 0.04% as opposed to 2% you'd be paying if you invest with um, a brick X and you don't pay a performance fee with the s p index fund so that's something something to consider so in conclusion uh, what do i think because i feel like this is a product that's targeted for someone in my situation someone who wants to buy a property and who don't mind getting some um exposure to the property market because i feel like it's been booming but also you do the fees just i can't rationalize the fees the fees just don't make sense to me I feel like you can get the same performance and you find cheaper products on the market, like on the um, stock market or you know, managed fund or index fund that's gonna charge you less fees, give you a better performance than this. So in my particular situation, I don't think it's a part of that makes sense. But if I was to think of the type of person that this would work for is if you are looking to invest in Australian residential property. You're passionate about it, you're all about it, that's the life that you want to live, that's what makes you happy, then you do you. This is the platform for you if you don't have enough money for that deposit. But if you're someone who just wants to get property exposure and or you want to diversify your portfolio, there are better ways to do it on the market, right? So if I was to invest in BRICX, I'd be looking to hold the um, the property long term because you're not doing it for the yield as I've mentioned the yield is low once you factor in the fees that you're going to be paying let me know in the comments below if you think this is something that you'd want to use or if someone from Big X watches this video and there's something that I've missed please let me know all right so I think that's it for me um, just let you guys know the podcast is live I've got an episode dropping today it should be out if you're watching this on Bitcoin I've just finished recording that one, so it's going to be a good. Um, please uh, check it out. I'm on Spotify. I'm on most platforms, not on Apple yet, because Apple is just, it's just Apple. It's a bit more complicated than everything else. But anyway, I uh, hope you guys have a good week. Um, I'm done for the day. I'm done for the day. And until next week, later. Peace.